Hi guys, it's Goose here. We're going to do another lesson. This is a solo, looking at the solo for Stormy Monday. Here we go. Okay guys, as you may notice here, um, I've actually got a looper pedal, so now I can, we're a bit, um, we've gone up a level. So what I was basically doing there, just to talk about it first and then we're going to go into specifics, is I'm thinking about chord tones, I'm thinking about arpeggios, I'm really, again, I'm thinking about the chord, the chords that are underneath me. Um, the last lick, obviously, I played with a T-Bone Walker lick, I played some BB King licks, um, you know, I played, I referenced maybe um, a, a Dickie Betts from the... You know that. You know that was a, a Dickie Betts reference from the Allman Brothers, and we've got the um, T Bone Walker reference because it's important when we're when we're playing a solo just to maybe sometimes reference those those who have gone before us and the history, you know, the language of that particular song. So it's always it's good to throw in a few licks, you know. Um, so let's just um, go from the top. We've got this um, one bar of G7, and then it four, and then it goes into a C7. Two, three, four. Back to G7, two up to G sharp, and now back to G. So let's look at those four bars and just see how we can navigate them. So my to get into this tune, I'm just going to play a major blues lick. Let's just bring this down here so you can see this. So I'm going to play here on the 8th fret, but um, this is my root note here, the first finger, but I'm going to use my 2nd finger, 7th to 9th fret on G. You know, don't go, it's 2 notes. Now that there is actually a tone and a half, it's 3. It's, I'm actually bending a minor 3rd. So it's, you know, sometimes you hit it, sometimes you don't, but, you know, really milk that, because you're going to, your entrance has got to be nice and melodic. That's my favourite lick, see, and you're just hanging on that F natural. Okay, so that, that kind of, that brings you over the first bit, so let's just try that with the music. Here we go. Okay, now let me give you another approach, which is really nice. I just I just kind of remembered what I just did in the first solo. So let's start again with that lick. Whatever. Now and that's really nice to play over that chord, that's that um, C chord. So let me just show you that lick. So we're going to go um, uh, notes D, D flat, C, or 10, 9, 8. If you don't know this lick, guys, man, you've got to get this lick in. You probably know it already, but. I kind of. So a few licks for you to play there. Now, but when it goes to that G7, we really want to hit that. We want to go, or that's a G sharp seven arpeggio. So let's just look at that. Um, we're on the um, sixth fret, D string, G string, fifth fret, B string, um, fourth fret. Pinky on the seventh fret, B. So let me just show you how that works out.
Okay, what we could do there. That's really nice. That's a really nice kind of resolve, rather, rather better than G. And that was, um, I added a, a major six in there. And now, instead of just going, picking the notes, I hammer on. You are, do that a lot. Um, so let's just go from the beginning. And then we can then we can just break there. We can just leave it on for. We can wait now. That will be really nice to do over that C, because there you're going to the major third of a C9 chord. So that's the fifth fret. If I'm going too fast, guys, let me know in the comments um, when you <laughs> watch this video. Not obviously live because we're making it. Fifth, third, second fret, G, F, E. That E note, E natural, is actually a third. Do, Re, Mi is a, a major third of a C9 or a C major chord. C major and C9 are totally different chords, as we know. They share a, a major third, they share a perfect fifth, but the C9 has a flat seven and the um, C major has a major seven, but I've shown you, told, I'll tell you that in another lesson better, clearer than what I have done already, because we're gonna, I'm gonna get a, a whiteboard and write it all down, and so you understand chords, but we'll, we'll get to that soon. So here we go. We're, now we're onto that C. Take a little breather there. Ah. Okay, so now we're going to go over this next section with the C chord, C9 chord. We're going to come with this lick. And now we're going to hit a buddy guy um, lick, which is going to be. The way we do that is we get a plectrum and a third finger, this, what I call this one here, this is the third finger. And we're going to hold that third finger on that that G. And I love how Buddy Guy does this. So you pick it up. I mean, you could do, or you could. I mean, you could even if you're not with a plectrum, you can. You know, you might want to use your, the second finger, but I, I prefer my third finger. It just naturally falls on that. And we're going to pick the the root here on the D string, fifth fret, G string, third and fifth. And that's a blue scale, flat five. And they, they all. So, so you're going. But keeping. Okay, you get the idea. Now we're going to do the cascading run up. Okay, so let's look at the run up. We're going to go fourth fret, fifth fret. 7th fret, 6th fret all on the G string and we can just hang on this 5th um, fret. So what we are actually doing there is we're hitting the major 3rd of the G, the minor 3rd of the A minor, the minor 3rd of the B minor, the minor 3rd of the B flat and then the minor 3rd of the A minor. And that's a really nice run up. Sorry. Now, well, you could, you could, you might want to pick pick a fifth. You know, you could you could so you could get um, and you could just experiment with other intervals. But I like that. I like the third because remember these are minor chords: the A minor, B minor, B flat. So that's going to get you over that. Now, if you wanted to get more technical, you could play arpeggio. So you could go. We do our friend the G7 arpeggio, which we did earlier. A minor seven arpeggio, and we could go. You're gonna have time there to go up and down. So that could be. Could 
could do something like that, it'd be a bit boring, I think. Uh, but what these arpeggios are for, the reason we learn these arpeggios is so we can pick out the intervals. Sorry. So you can see that run up there, I'm using a fifth. That's, that's the fifth um, usage going up and down. Now we're gonna have this chord here. Now this is a big debate, I actually made a, a YouTube clip about this, this chord. Some people say that it's actually an E flat major seven. Whatever, an E flat major rather. Going to a, to a D9. Just kind of so we've got. When we go there. But what I do, when I'm playing this live, I play E flat nine. And why do I do that? Just to make my life simpler and the band and everybody just, you know, we don't want to get too confused here. So, I, so over in E flat nine, we can use, we can use our E flat seven arpeggio, which is second finger on, remember eight, second finger, very important. Second finger here on the A string, sixth fret, first finger on the fifth fret, D string. So, and then we're going to eight and eight on the D and G respectively. And then, um, oh, I'm adding the flat seven there, sorry, I should have done that. Which is on the fifth fret G string. And then you're going to get back to your here. Now, T-Bone Walker, I'm going to be um, picking around here, around this area. Ronnie L is really good at this sort of stuff, you know. But um, there, I'm going to just do the kind of Chuck Berry, T-Bone Walker. Well, Chuck Berry probably started off T-Bone Walker. What well, he did. We all know that lick. If you don't know that lick, I'm kind of bending Hendrix sort of octave bending. And I might want to end on that major, the um, D, the, the, the major third of the D9 chord. And basically guys, that is it. That's a solo. If you've got any questions about that, you want me to go more in depth, or you want me to do, you know, a second video about this. You, you, guys, I'll do anything you want. You know, you're paying for the Patreon site. I'll do anything you want. Just let me know what you want. But that's that's the solo. That's how I approach the solo for Stormy Monday. Hopefully that's going to give you kind of like, rather than just like kind of playing a scale and uh, hoping for the best, we don't ever want to do that. We want to be playing over the chord. The chord is a colour. We want to be melodic. How can we be melodic? It's just playing over the chords. And melodies will just come and you'll, you'll, you'll be playing and you'll, eventually you get to the stage of like, you forget of changing chords and those melodies will come through and you'll be like, wow, I really like that. And uh, that's when it gets really fun. But work hard, guys, and uh, this is this is a whole course. So I'm showing you some advanced stuff. We're gonna come put it back to do some basic stuff next because I don't wanna to get too advanced and uh, crazy, but we can go crazy if you want. Just, like I said, leave some comments, let me know what else you want. Okay, Goose signing out. By the way, new guitar, guys. It's a Navigator. Made by ESP 2003. It's a little bit heavy, it's eight pounds. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna keep it. Um, I've actually put this up for sale actually on Reverb, but it's a beautiful guitar um, and it sounds really good, so I might keep it. I mean, it looks just fantastic and it's really nice, lovely neck on it, but I might sell it, I don't know yet. So it's in its, um, you know, shall I sell it or shall I keep it stage? Okay guys, take care, see you soon, bye.